All right, today we're going to take a look at some linear functions and slope. A lot of this is going to be review, all right, but definitely skills that we need to make sure that we master before we move on. All right, so um, to save a little bit of time here, I went ahead and drew out our four scenarios for our slope. We're going to have a positive slope, a negative slope. We're going to take a look at the slope of a vertical line, and we're going to take a look at the slope of a horizontal line. Okay, so a positive slope uh, rises to the right. So anything along this line right here, that's our standard positive slope. We have a rise, which is a positive number, and a run, which is a positive number. Our negative slope falls to the right. All right, so all negative slopes look like this. All right, again, I would be rising with a positive number, running with a negative number, therefore you would get your negative slope there. All right, now for the vertical line. All right, obviously that's an up and down line. Uh, let's say on this one that we're going to go through three. All right, I would expect you to be able to write the equation of that. A vertical line is x equals three, goes through three on the x-axis. That's how you can remember that. All right, and if we're thinking of these as roads, this would be driving up a hill, this would be driving down a hill. We cannot drive up the side of a building. All right, so that's why this slope is an undefined slope. It doesn't exist. All right, good way to think of that. So it's an undefined slope. All right, and then on our horizontal line, okay, let's just say we're going to go through maybe say two. All right, again, the equation, I'm going to the y-axis, I'm going through two, so my equation is going to be y equals two. All right, this is your Indiana roads, your slope is going to be zero. Okay, you're not going up a hill, you're not going down a hill. All right, you have zero slope. All right, so just a real quick review there over those four slopes. All right, now other things with slopes, you should recall the slope formula when given two points. All right, so let's do slope formula. All right, so they give you the first point as x sub 1, y sub 1. They give you a second point, which is x sub 2, y sub 2. All right, we should have this formula memorized. This is the m equals y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x sub 1. All right, so basic computations are going to give you two points. They're going to ask you to find that slope. All right, so let's go ahead and work out an example of that. Let's do maybe say a 4, negative 2, and maybe say a 6, 8. All right, now, you don't have to do this, but it might help you to go ahead and label this stuff so when you're plugging it in, you're not going to grab the wrong numbers. All right, this clearly is the first point. This clearly is the second point. That makes this x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2. All right, that's going to let you easily see what needs to be plugged into your formula. All right, so I'm going to subtract my y's, so I'm going to do an 8 minus a negative 2. I'm going to subtract the x-coordinates, so 6 minus 4. All right, a little bit of arithmetic there on top. We're going to go plus plus there, so we'll have a 10 over 2. That's going to give me a slope of 5. All right, so straightforward there. We should be all good with that. Do you have any questions so far? Okay. All right. Um, now, technically, they could... Instead of just always giving you two points and asking you to find the slope, you could be given a slope and one point, all right, and then maybe one of the coordinates here, and you need to find the other point. So let's go ahead and make one of those questions up real quick, because it's not sometimes, it's not always just a straightforward plug in the formula and see what happens. How about if they tell you that the slope is a one half? And then they give you a point of maybe, say, 2, 1. They give you another point, maybe, say, uh, let's do 5, and then a y. All right, and then they ask you, okay, well, find out what this coordinate has to be to make this true. All right, so again, yes, you're still going to have to use this formula. You're just not going to use it in the way that we have typically used it before. You know what your slope is. You know the first point. So this is x sub 1, this is y sub 1. All right, this is x sub 2. This would be y sub 2. That's what I'm trying to find. So you're just going to plug things in and then work it out. I'll have an equation. You can solve for one unknown. So m is 1 half. All right, I'm going to set that equal to my y sub 2, which is a y. 
minus y sub 1 all over x sub 2, 5, minus x sub 1, 2. All right, let's do a little bit of a simplifying here. I'm going to have a 1 half is equal to that y minus 1 all over. I can go ahead and do that subtraction there. All right, now this is a proportion. Probably the easiest way to solve this would be to cross multiply down. All right, when they cross multiply down on that left-hand side, you got to remember that this is a binomial, and we're going to be distributing that too. All right, so then I'm going to have, uh, come down below my arrows here, a 2y minus a 2 is equal to a 3. All right, and then you just go ahead and solve for y. So 2y is equal to a 5, and then running out of room here, y is equal to 5 halves. All right, so uh, a, a way to look at that formula other than just straight calculating that slope. Okay, all right, we're good so far. All right, now um, this is linear functions and slope, so I think we've addressed slope pretty good here. Let's take a look at our linear functions. At this point, you should be pretty good with slope-intercept form. So let's write slope-intercept form. And you should also be pretty familiar with point-slope form. All right, if either one of these were not done, if point-slope form was not done very much in algebra one and algebra two, all right, you'll find that we are now going to start using that a little bit more frequently. All right, so that slope-intercept form. All right, let's color code a little bit here. We'll do y equals, all right, your m, which is your slope, x plus b. All right, uh, putting that m and that b in a different color just to show out that that's where your numbers are going to be. All right, m is your slope, and that b is the y-intercept. All right, that's the one that's used most commonly. It's used a lot in algebra one. It's used a lot in algebra two. So you should be pretty familiar with that one. All right, now point slope form. Y minus, again, we'll do some color coding here. Y sub one is equal to M, the slope, times X minus X sub one. Oops, that should be in black. All right, now this one you may be less familiar with, all right, but again, M pretty much is always going to be that slope. All right, now, X sub 1, Y sub 1, that's going to represent a point on the line. So X sub 1, Y sub 1, all right, it is a point on that line, all right? Not necessarily the X intercept, not necessarily the Y intercept, not anything like that. It's just a random point that's going to be on that line, all right? Now, from this, from both of these two forms, I should be able to give you pieces of information and then you put it in either form. I could uh, give you the slope and a random point on the line and ask you to write it in both forms. I could give you the form, ask you to pull out the slope, ask you to pull out the point, ask you to pull out the y-intercept. So I probably cannot do an example of absolutely every type of question that you're going to encounter, but we can take a look at a few. All right, so let's say they tell you to write an equation. I'm going to do some abbreviating here to shorten it up a little bit. In point slope form given that they tell you the slope equals negative one half and a point on the line is negative six three. All right, so clearly we know the slope, which is the m. This is our point, so x sub 1 and y sub 1. All right, now generally when I do these formulas here, all right, you've got minus signs in the formula. So if I plug in a negative 6 right there with that minus sign in front of it, it's going to make it a plus. So I think of, you know, minus a negative 6 plus. It's going to be the opposite when you plug, put it back in. Same thing here. If I put a 3 in right here, because of that minus in the formula is going to be a minus 3, so it's essentially the opposite of this number right here. So this should be a quick, straightforward uh, problem that you wouldn't have to do any work for. You could just straight write the equation. So y minus 3 
is equal to, put the slope in, negative one half, following the formula, x opposite sine plus six. All right, so this one was no more than, they give you the exact pieces of information you need, write that equation. All right, now, if they did a part B, and then they said, now, let's just do it as another example, rewrite into slope intercept form. Alright, now I'm going to work it out here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the equation that I just did in that last part right there. So let's come up here. Let's do a y minus a 3 equals a negative 1 half x plus 6. Alright, now basically what do I need to do? I need to have y on the left hand side by itself. I need the slope and then an x plus a y intercept here. The easiest thing to do would be to distribute that negative 1 half. So we'll have a y minus a 3 is equal to a negative one-half x. All right, multiplying that negative one-half and six, we ought to be able to e real easily get a negative three there, or minus three. Okay, add three to both sides. All right, so negative three and plus three goes away. Negative three and plus three goes away. Y equals a negative one-half x, and my y-intercept then is a zero. Okay, so now I've taken that previous answer and rewrote it into slope-intercept form. So they will ask you to go back and forth uh, between the two. So a lot of these questions may be multiple steps as well. All right. Um, let's also take a look at what if they don't give you straightforward information that you need directly. Maybe you have to think a little bit, come up with something that you need in order to complete a problem. All right, so maybe you'll see something that'll say, write the equation. Again, I'm going to abbreviate here, in point slope form. And slope intercept form. Given one, two, and negative three, eight. All right, so this time, instead of being straightforward and telling you what the slope is and telling you a point on the line, they've just given you two points. So this is where they're wanting you to apply what you know and do more than one thing. They've given you two points. All right, um, from two points, I can find a slope. All right, the first thing they told you to write it in was point slope form. That's going to be the easiest one because it's real easy to find a point. Well, I know two points, and I can calculate the slope with the slope formula. All right, so assuming that this is our first point, x sub 1, y sub 1. Assuming this is our second point, x sub 2, y sub 2. All right, so slope formula. Let's even spell out our steps here. What we're going to do, we're going to find our slope first. All right, so I'm going to have an 8 minus a 2 over a negative 3 minus 1. Okay, so straightforward here, we'll have a 6 over a negative 4. That negative needs to be put up in the top, or yeah, the negative needs to be put up in the top just to make it look a little more mathematical and reduce the lowest term, so a negative 3 halves there. All right, so you have to find the slope on this. All right, now write it in point slope form. Okay, that was my first thing. So I have a slope, and I have two points. So technically, you could use either one of these points and this slope to put it in point-slope form. All right, so let's do our point-slope form. And actually, I'll go ahead and show you both answers. All right, so the first one, I will write it using the first point. Okay, so y minus the y-coordinate, so minus 2 put in the slope that we found, negative 3 halves, and then x opposite of what we see there, minus 1. All right, so that is one answer for that. Let's go ahead and box that in. All right, now if you would have chose to use the second point, your equation would be y minus 8 is equal to, again, the same slope, negative 3 halves, and then x 
plus 3. All right, so again, two different answers there for that part since it didn't specify which point it needed to do. All right, now, the last thing it told you to do is also to write it in slope-intercept form. All right, I can use either one of these two equations. I should get the exact same slope-intercept form as long as I don't make any mistakes. So let's do our slope-intercept form. All right, and I'm just going to take that top equation. So y minus 2 is equal to negative 3 halves x minus 1. All right, so first off, we're going to distribute that slope. So we'll have a y minus 2 is equal to a negative 3 halves x. A negative times a negative is going to be positive, so we'll have a positive 3 halves. All right, from there, we need to subtract 2, or I'm sorry, add 2 to both sides of the equation to get that to move over. All right, you can think of this as 1 and 1 half. 1 and 1 half plus another 2 is 3 and a half. So we can do that without a calculator. Negative 3 halves x plus 3 and a half. Doesn't look like a 2. All right, so then there we have our slope-intercept form. All right, but this would be a really good example of how they're going to expect you to use more than one thing. It's not, not always going to just be take the stuff and put it directly in the form. You're going to have to think a little bit as to what you need. Okay, um, questions so far? All right, so for right now what I want to do is let's take a little break from lecture. Let's go to um, a small short group activity. I've got a little worksheet with five questions on it. We'll work on that. And then we'll come back and we will lecture some parallel and perpendicular lines.